And we're back with some more Dyson Sphere program. And today, today we're going to build a thousand signs. Well, I'm going to try and get a thousand signs built. Who knows if I'll have the time to do it. I think we should get most of it done, if not all of it. All right, here we are on our setup. This is the equator, uh, uh, equator of the planet we are going to build this whole setup on. We're going to build a thousand signs on this one planet and be done with it. Now, we're squeezing in seven of these logistics towers across the top, namely because this is as close as we can get them. Uh, they can only be placed in a certain distance of each other, and these ones have all been crammed as tightly together as we possibly can. All right. I was going to skip an awful lot of this, but I figured this is actually you know, good information to know. So I'm going to show you how I just plan them out. They're, it's fairly straightforward. You just go to the calculator. This here is the Dyson Sphere calculator. And all we've done up here is we've selected white science, and then we've set it for 1,000 items per minute. That's going to take 250 assemblers to make that, or uh, science buildings to make that. But let's maybe, hmm, let's just say we'll grab oh, something simple like uh, glass. So to, we're going to need 2,000 glass to finish this whole project. And that will require this many belts of it and this many assemblers of it. Now, there's a few things you probably want to check. And that is that you've got your belt set to Mark 3, assuming you are. You can also use Mark 2, Mark 1s, etc. And level 3 assemblers, which is what we're using. You can change all the items and stuff, rate of precision. There's a whole bunch of things you can change in here. But what's very important here is these recipes. For example, to make hydrogen, what we are using, or not hydrogen, to make graphene, we're using fire ice because we can harvest fire ice from giants and it, there's loads of fire ice out there. So we should be able to get enough from the gas giants. You could, of course, make it using sulfuric acid and graphene, but yeah, we're not, we're not going to bother with that. So you can change a bunch of stuff here, like you can get graphene from oil instead. You can change how you get your hydrogen. We want to leave everything on default. We're not going to be using any of the unique items around the map. We want to like just set with the, the, the normal stuff, the stuff that's very renewable. We kind of want to leave the science running forever and we want to save the good stuff for the Dyson Sphere program we're going to be building later. We're going to need an awful lot more resources than this takes. So let's save the good stuff for after we've got our mining science down. Now, I think for first setup, we're going to start with crystal silicone. This will allow us to demonstrate a few things all at once. So normally what I do is I just grab a copy of the link, go to the next page, and then we just change this to what we're looking for. Crystal silicone over here. And then we need 67 because we're rounding up. This says we need, oh, sorry, wrong one. This one says we need 66.6 .6 of these. I'm just going to set it to 67. That's just one above it. And then we're going to round it up to 68 just so that we have a nice round number to work with. Now, you notice on the output belts here, it's going to take more than one output belt to handle all of this. But I think we can work around that. This here is our sort of template furnace setup that we're using. We can fit four rows of furnaces right here squeezed up tight against now i know it's not perfectly symmetrical but mm, c'est la vie it's just how we could squeeze it in and then all we're going to do is copy this we do not want to set this up before we deploy it uh, the reason being if we were to say oh do something crazy like uh, give this assign this all out to the crystals and stuff that we're trying to copy paste we'd have to change it next time we copy something so you know what i'm just going to leave this blank which leaves us with a nice blank setup that we can go back to and oh i messed that up Let's make sure we don't copy some of those uh, transport belts over that side. And that should give us a nice copy to work with. Perfect. Then we'll just run down here and chuck it down. Oh, come on. There's stuff in the way. One moment. After a little bit of fiddling around, I managed to squeeze in a row of 17 furnaces here. Now, there's a reason we put in 17 furnaces. We'll just uh, wait until... Oh, God. I got an idea. Triple speed. There we go. That should make things a little bit faster. Now that we have all of them down, simple thing to do is we're going to chuck a bunch of ships on here. And uh, we'll chuck on all of those. Now it's got logistics drones and logistics vessels. Then we're going to want ourselves some silicone ore, local demand. And then we're going to make sure high purity silicone is allowed in here. We're not going to actually have any demand for this dough. And then crystal silicone. So what happens here is we're going to have the silicone ore come out this side and feed into all of these. We're also going to have it come out the... Oh, well, yeah, the speed's maybe a little bit high. It's easier to build when you're on slower speeds. And then we're going to have this one also spit out silicone ore. And then it's going to come down here and go past these 17. One second while we uh, change all of these over to this. A little bit of a copy-paste job, we should be fine. With that all done, it's just a case of wiring it through the middle and we'll turn all of these into crystal silicon. It's a one-to-one -one ratio with these. By one-to-one -one ratio, I mean for every one of these, what, crystal silicones you need, you also need one of these high-purity silicon. So we'll just come down here, and we'll set that to output that, and we'll set this one to output that. 
and boom. With 17 of these apiece, that's 20, 34. So this, this is providing us with 34 assembly machines worth. If you look back here though, you realize we need 68. That was what the plan was for. However, we couldn't build, we couldn't build them just all the way out. If, if we built a row, the maximum length we could make them was 30. If we go beyond 30, we wouldn't be able to put enough ore along the belt to actually feed the furnaces. Uh, another way to look at that, here is just one setup for high purity silicon, and you'll notice that that's going to max out the transport belt. So that raw silicone ore you're pulling out of the mines, you need one full transport belt of it to run 30 mines or 30 furnaces. If we have 31 furnaces, the last furnace is not going to get any resources, so we can't do it that way. That's why we're splitting this up, and we're going to have 34 in that block we just made because there's two rows of 17. That's 34 a piece, and those 34 furnaces make 34 of this and 34 of that. Now all we have to do is double down. We make a second one of these and we'll have 68. And to make things even nicer, since this is already configured and ready to go, all we have to do is grab this little thingy here, grab all of these, uh, maybe avoid snagging any of those mines. There we go. And boom, I think we got a lot of it. Yeah, oh wait, I think I missed a piece there at the end. Not hugely important, but... Ah, damn it, it seems to lag out a bit. It's not lag out so much as just get a little bit slow. There we go, and done. Then all we do is speed up times by three. And this reason, this tower, when it goes down, this tower is going to be the reason we didn't copy and paste everything the first time around, or we didn't set it up before we copy pasted it originally. This is now immediately requesting silicone ore, and it's starting to get filled up. That's why we have left the other one back there, the plain one with nothing assigned to it, so that we have a blank template to copyright to copy from. We could, of course, save the output string from this. There's a the way to input and output strings here. It's just, I'm not bothered. So instead, we'll just keep a, a, a template back there. And almost done. One last thing to do, and that is fill that up with ships. Done. Now we have exactly 64 silicone or 68 silicon mines ready to go doing this uh, high crystal silicon. With that sorted, we can remove this, remove this. We don't need it. Now, this does leave us with a problem, though. This silicon here, it has created demands, as in, if you notice down here, we have this much silicon we need. How do we build, well, we're going to have to subtract that silicon, that's a pain, but thankfully the calculator comes in with a built-in tool. If we just click on any of these items, it removes its requirements. So if I click on this crystal silicon here, just keep an eye on this 1400 down here, and when I click on this, it removes it as a requirement, and 2000 silicon per second is removed from here. It basically has removed that as a requirement from this build. So we've got it done, we've removed it from the list, we're sorted. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to build, oh, sorry, I removed that from the list. We're going to build 400 silicon mines because that's how many we're going to need. Yes, uh, I think we'll be making those maximum size though. Before we do pretend those silicon mines, there's a, a few things I should cover. One, this blueprint tool is a mod, linked in the description if you want it. Uh, so it's it, very useful. It makes uh, building all of these a lot simpler. At the same time, we've made a few modifications here to how this works. Now, inside here, we've set this to local demand and remote demand. This is to stop other ships taking resources out of this, taking the silicon out of here and grabbing it elsewhere. What we want is all the mines to demand resources here, but we don't want to share any of the stuff we've produced. So you'll notice here, I've set this to local supply and remote storage. Well, I think remote storage does it. Honestly, I've never really messed around with this the remote storage section too much. All we want to do is make sure that only the high purity, the high purity silicon and crystal silicon do not leave this planet. This, this entire planet is not going to share its resources with anyone. It's going to pull in resources and churn out 1,000 science per minute. That's all we care about. Or, you know, 1,000 science per minute? Yep, something like that. And we don't want it sharing any of its silicon, any of its crystal silicon, any of its iron plates, steel, titanium, all that stuff that all stays here. So, oh, and then one other thing. Well, we're going to start running out of mines and all that very quickly. So how do we get more mines in? Well, that's where we just click on that and we can rotate around and go to the top of the planet where we've built this. Now, you'll notice when we click on this, we've got mines, blah, 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 all these things, and we can grab more of these and just chuck them into our inventory. And we don't even have to move from where we are. I think we've got one other one, yeah, one of them that does Tesla Towers. And you'll notice, oh, I should probably go back and point that out. Uh, in that Tesla Tower one, we also have summoned in warpers. So there's a bunch of space warpers that have been summoned in here. The remote demand, local supply. The reason for that is we can go to over here, and we can set this to have warpers in it, or we can demand warpers, let's just put it in the bottom row, yeah, and we'll say local demand, and we'll make it very something, something small, like 100. So, local demand, boom, and then a little transport ship goes and gets it. We don't want to make this remote demand, because if we made this remote demand, they'll send one of the big ships, and one of the big ships will bring back 8,000 of them. 
you know, a hundredth of time is fine. We, we don't need that many. So, same here. The reason for this is there might not, might not be enough resources in the system, or the resources in the system might run out for silicon. This way, as we keep expanding out through the universe and tapping into more and more mines, well, what'll happen is the ships from our system here will be able to go to other systems to pull in silicon that they need. We'll be doing the same with iron, copper, all of the ones we get. Ooh, you know what? We'll, we'll just finish this off, but I really need to do a fire ice run where we colonize a bunch of gas giants for fire ice. But next up, we're going to do a quick 400 silicon mines, was it? 400 silicon mines, well, that's going to be pretty easy. I went back and copied our original blueprint. Oh, wrong one. I went back and copied our original blueprint. This is completely empty. We'll stick you right about... Ooh, ooh. There should be good. Oh, wait, no. I want to make sure I line this up with the edge of the map. There we go. And done. And then we just set that up to times three. And that should quickly allow us to fill this out. In fact, while this is filling out, we should get the tower down shortly. And once that's done, we can start configuring this without even having to move. Uh, oh, put a, give, give me a tower right about there. We want to make sure we're powering the sucker. Excellent. Check in the ships. Check in the other ships. Uh, we're going to want to bring in warpers down here, same as before. And since this is going to be silicon, we're going to want silicon on or in here, local demand, remote demand, and then we want to allow it to contain high purity silicon, but remote storage. We don't want any of it leaving planet. And then it's pretty much the same thing again, but this time we're doing it for all four rows. It's just silicon, 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 and one last one of silicon. Done. Now I just have to configure all 30 of these for silicon production and finish the building. One moment. All we've done now is copied this design because, well, it's already got all its settings set up. You, you do not, trust me, you do not want to be going through each one of these and setting up each one of them to silicon. It's just really, really annoying. But now that all that's done, we'll see the next problem you'll encounter, or, well, you'll, you'll hit this issue every so often. Uh, when we try and deploy this, you'll notice it's uh, one, we're too close to an logistics tower, and this one we have lack of item. So the lack of item, and you can see that in red there, the inserters look to be running short. So we need to grab ourselves some insorter, inserters. We just go back up here. We grab this, and oh look, we've got a. Ooh, we should, we definitely need more inserters. Give me a bit. Yeah, three thousand should be good. We'll just load up on those now. Why not? And that should be the end of that. And we can now deploy this one again. And it keeps the last blueprint you used. But do remember, if you hold down shift and click on something, you've you've technically blueprinted it. So holding down shift and copying something will wipe your previous blueprint. That's caught me once or twice. And come on, right there. Okay, there we go. We were too close to the logistics station. And there we go. That's three, six, nine, twelve. That's another 120. So that's 240 silicon done. And it doesn't take that long. No, nope. okay, sorry, I took a break for dinner and a few things in the middle, but we'll, we'll get these next uh, next ones hammered out in no time. That's the third one down. That's 360. All right, we need 40 more. Hmm. So we'll just grab this and we'll blueprint ourselves another 40. Nope, oh, auto-saving is starting to get a little bit slower. Uh, we'll grab you there. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, you know what, let's just make it 12, we'll round up, done, now we'll just chuck this on at the end, and we are out of transport belt, aren't we, yeah, we are out of transport belt, one second, probably grab some more transport belt from one of the towers, and done, so that should be the last silicon mine we need to build here, or the last silicon furnace we need to put down, I just gotta put some ships in this, and we're pretty much solid, and that's pretty much what we're going to be doing for... Well, that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing off-screen for the rest. is just putting these down one at a time. The mines are pretty much... These, these silicon mines are all done, but I'll do the iron, copper, all that stuff off-screen. This is our starting area here, and you'll notice the iron... That whole area there that used to be blank is now switched to iron. We've actually filled in all the iron. I think it was 334. I think we rounded up to 340 just to make sure we wouldn't run short of anything. Now that that's done, it's time to do the titanium smelters. And for them, all we need is 300 titanium smelters. And then we'll just line this up with the previous ones. We'll throw that in right up. Uh, oh, nope, too close. And done. And then we're going to do the exact same thing here we did with the other ones. We're going to get it a, a few warpers, throw on some ships, make sure it demands all the resources to this planet alone and it doesn't share anything with anyone else. So, titanium, local demand, remote demand. Uh, we're going to need some warpers. And done. That should be, uh, well, the start of titanium furnaces. We're going to need 300, and each one of these is worth 120. So we're going to need, what, two of these will give us 160, and then we're going to need another 40 beyond that. Should be fairly straightforward. And that is a big chunk of the mining done. Uh, but it's not all of it, unfortunately. 
when I say a big chunk, we did about, ooh, 400 silicone, uh, silicon, about 67 crystal silicon, uh, 270 copper, 203 magnets, 300 titanium, and about 340 iron. That's a lot. It's, it's a hell of a lot, but still not enough. We need more. And uh, next up, we are going to be doing energetic graphite, crystal, crystal, oh no, wait, energetic graphite and glass, that was it. Where did I put them? Ah, there we go. I put down a few more blueprints here. Turn on the lights. And these ones here are basically the opposite side, just a, a mirror image of what was over there. So we're just going to continue this on and hammer at the last of all of the smelting. God, this, this, this takes a little time. We've gone through so many smelters at this point. The amount of times I've had to go back up to our little top resource patch and grab more of the more of the smelters it's it's getting ludicrous also the amount of transport belt we've used is pretty much off the charts and we've only just started we're just doing the smelting section now that's all that there is the last of the mines no more furnaces are going to be needed on this planet done all right with all of that we can now get back to well doing the core stuff oh my god the lights on is it yeah that light is awesome though it does make the solar panels look at you Solar panels do not generate energy while they're doing this. They only get power from the sun, so you're you're fine using this and not having to worry about generating free power. Uh, but through here, these three here, we're going to put all the buildings that we need to build stuff. So first up, I think we're going to do gears. According to the calculator, we're going to need 45 of these. Now, a couple of things to check is how many of them saturate a belt. So in this instance, it'll take 20 of these to set output one full belt of gears, and it will require one full belt of iron. So we can't make these rows any longer than 20. That's fine, we only want to have, what, 44 of them? So we'll make these, say, 12 long. 12, 24, 36, 48. Ooh, that might be, you know, 11 long. We'll make them 11 long, so that'll be, oh, actually, no. Okay, we'll make them 12 long. So all we do is we go back to the game, and then we just look along here. All we have to do is make, we can squeeze in four of these quite handily. This is sort of the, uh, the outer extremities of these builds, so that they'll fit in between this interstellar station. And that's because this only has one input and one output. We can fit in four. So let me finish this off and I'll show you one that can only fit in three instead. That's gears started up. Next up, let's get on to something slightly more complicated that will make this a little bit more awkward, and that's the electromagnets. And the electromagnets we're going to plug into this tower, and yeah, this is where it gets a little bit less pleasant. So the electromagnets here take copper and magnets to go into them, and you'll notice there's only three of them here as opposed to the four over there. That's because that's all that will squeeze in between here and here. This is our... What you're sort of doing here is we're limiting ourselves to this build area so that we don't sort of impinge on that. And just by keeping this standard, it allows you to build faster. At this stage of the game, when you're starting to just well, plop down lots and lots of machines, what's more important is your time. Well, okay, it depends on the person. Some people, some people like to concentrate on efficiencies and such like. But in this case, the most efficient thing to worry about is your own time, because it's going to take so long to lay these out. We've got to lay literally thousands of buildings. So what you really want to do is come up with a nice blueprint that you can just stamp down, and while it may not be perfectly efficient, it should be fast and easy to throw down in large quantities so that you don't have to spend as much time doing it. That way you get it done quicker. Uh, the question I always get asked is, the question I get asked is, how do you get uh, how do you get it done? How do you keep focused and get things, you know, moving along? Um, it's like reading a recipe, I suppose. All I'm doing as I'm going through here is just ticking these off. I, I don't need to know the whole plan. Well, I kind of know what the whole plan is because I've done this all before, but... Right now, I'm just making gears. I don't need to know how many we need for this, engines or electromagnets or whatever. They're all included in this. And once they're done, it's ticked off and it's on to the next. And once these electromagnets are done, we'll tick those off and move on to the next as well. And you're just ticking off items. When you actually have a, th a list of what you know you have to do, I just find this much simpler to build this way. Now, we could go the opposite direction and just cram down loads and loads of whatever and just we'll probably have enough of it all. Not as... That doesn't motivate me quite as much as going, we know exactly what we need and we're going to build exactly that. Oh, one thing to note about these electromagnets, you can only fit 10 of them in a row and that will saturate one full belt. It will consume one row of magnets, it will consume half a belt of copper. So what you could do is you could feed one belt of copper between two of them and... Mm, actually, let me show you. We could take copper through here, and let's just throw some copper down there. We could get that copper and we could use that to feed across into this machine so that this machine doesn't need a copper belt this side. I'm just not bothered. <laughs> See, this design, we can recycle it and use it again and again. So we can use it, so well, actually probably not now, but for multiple devices that have two inputs, one output, we can just keep recycling this design over and over. And I don't really want to care about mm, how much space we're saving. So we could break this down into four. 
it's just really not worth it for time management reasons or laziness reasons, whatever way you want to look at it. All right, but just uh, let me hammer at these electromagnets anyway. One thing to note about these designs, now that we've gone away from furnaces, no more of these ships. I should stop doing that. That's just habit. That was habit. Sorry about that. Uh, did I put them on the other ones? Yep, I did the same thing there. Nope, they can go. Uh, they also don't need warpers. We can get rid of that. Uh, yep. The reason for this is, well, these things should be able to get all their natural no, raw resources from here. So all the magnets on this planet that we're creating are locked to this planet. They shouldn't go anywhere else. And all the copper on this planet shouldn't go anywhere else. And we want all of this stuff to stay here as well. So everything's locked to remote storage. None of this is going to go anywhere but right here on this planet. Self-contained little production facility. And that means we only have to worry about pulling in raw resources from other planets. And that's electromagnets done. Let me find what's next on the list. All right, one little trick I want to show you that's, well, not so much a trick, as just a convenience. We're going to look at these microcrystalline components that we're about to build next. This is fairly straightforward. However, we can only fit 20 of them per line. Otherwise, well, we won't be able to fit any more because the silicone, the silicone we're going to be putting down the line, there won't be enough of it. It'll, it'll, 20 of them will eat one whole belt of it. And we can only remember place three rows of these, which means we can fit 80. So we can fit 80 of them, or sorry, 60, 60 of them on one tower. And the problem is we need 133, so 6 and 6 is 12. We're going to be using three towers one way or the other. So that's going to be annoying. The last tower is only going to require 13, which is sort of a bit of a waste, and it could just be inconvenient. So a simple thing I like to do is just uh, say we'll grab the lot of them, which is, say, 134 of these divided between three towers. That'll give us 46, 44.6 per tower. And then each one has three rows, so divide it by three, so each row should have 14.8. We'll just round that up to 15. So 15 multiplied by 3, that gives us one tower, and multiply that by 3 again, that means we'll have 135 of them. So we make it 15 long as opposed to making 2 at 20 and in the last one just something weird. That way we can blueprint one at 15, and then just make three of them really quickly, one after the other. And there we go. 15 of these all in a row, all feeding back to this tower. And the joy of it is we just grab the blueprint tool, and we grab the whole thing. All the way down, try not to nick all the power poles as well. That should be perfect. Then we just throw this over here. We line it up with the last one because the last one is also built very similarly. Boom. Uh, that's one, and we're going to need one more, one more, wasn't it? So we'll put this one down. Oh, we're out of inserters for this one. No problems at all. We'll just pop back down to our supply tower and we'll grab, say, 1500 of those. That'll keep us going for a while. You, you go through, when you're building at this rate, the rate at which you go through things starts to become ridiculous. It's why you need a really, really solid mall behind you if you're going to do this. All right, just, uh, I'm going to speed up time and see if we can't get this done. One last thing we're going to look at, because I'm running out of time, unfortunately, is motors. So for motors, let's have a quick look at the calculator. We need 89 of them. Well, well you're, you always round up. So you need 89 of them. And if we check here, this thing maxes out a whole belt of iron plate in... Oh, where is it? Uh, get rid of the gears for a second. You see, if we get rid of the gears, it shows us that it needs one place, one full belt of iron plate just to feed these. These things take iron plate, gears, and electromagnetic turbo, or electromagnets. So we need to make sure we don't go above 20 on each row. That means we need about 15 per row and two towers. So that'll give us 90. Yeah, uh, 15 per row, three rows per tower. Well, you know what? This is going to be the template. We will have the three resources come in on these three belts. One here, one here, and one here. All three of these are exit belts or outputs from the tower. And then the return motors will go on this and go right back into the tower. So we'll be bringing in three items and outputting one. And what I'm sort of doing here is, where is it? I've got a template over here. Yeah. This is my two to one template where there's two outputs and one input. And this is going to be my three to one template. I'll just usually make it about seven rows long and then I just copy paste it wherever I need it and then extend it as necessary. That doesn't mean it, let me demonstrate. This here is what our blueprint will look like. It's just seven towers. I find seven is probably the minimum I'm going to need for just about everything, but uh, that could change, I suppose. And now that we do want to actually make those motors, we can grab all of this. Now, in a second, we'll exclude the power poles in a second. What's more important here is the back here. You notice because we're doing three in, three out, we use literally every single input and output on the tower. So we need access to the back as well. So you've got to be careful about making sure you snag those when you're doing a grab. I maybe put that a little bit too close. And also we do have this here just in case we do find it a, a very small uh, build that needs doing. All right, let's chuck this down here and I'll just show you how I refine it down so that we can chuck motors into it. 
That needs to be... Oh, god damn it. I think I need to move that mine a little bit. Actually, what am I doing? Moving the mine would be a waste of time, uh, literally. Instead, what we want to do is just move a little bit past it. In fact, bothering to remove the mine would just waste our time and slow us down. So we're just going to place that right there. And I remember this will only give us seven, which a bit of a downside, but one moment and I'll show you how you can quickly expand it. Now that we've got them all here, I've just filled them all in with the actual motor requirement. And then you just do, grab, do a quick blueprint grab. You just try and grab, oh, make that a tiny tad smaller. You grab everything up to about there. Boom. God, did I get the other side? It's, it's not going to be perfectly easy, but at least it makes it simpler. And then that gives us 14. That's 7, 7, 14. And then we just do one row at the very end, which honestly, it's a quick blueprint grab to put in one last section. Almost done. Then we just grab a quick blueprint in the last bit. And I think that's the end of it, right? Nope, I think I made that too long, did I? No, actually, that finds up just fine. Then you got to do one last thing. you got to hook them up. What you do is here is you grab this, and since they're all going the same direction, done, 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 back out. We'll have to do this, of course, on the other uh, the other joint as well. Oh, damn it. Sometimes when you do this from the opposite side of a building, it doesn't like it very much. Uh, done, out, in, in. Also, try and give yourself a, a pattern. For example, I'll just show you what I do. Up here, I try and always make the output be on the far right side. So for all of my outputs and all of and everything, it's pretty much on the right side. The rightmost belt takes all the outputs and the inputs go on every other area. So that means I know which ones are the inputs and the outputs without having to double check the belts or try and figure it out graphically. One last little design thing I like to do when I'm making these is when it comes to the outputs and where the, everything goes, I check to see which one has the highest throughput. For example, on this one, you need two iron plate, one gear and one electromagnet. So iron plate is the highest requirement. Therefore, the iron plate will either go on this belt or this belt, which is the closest belt to the machine. It just means there's less travel time. So let's just stick it uh, here. And oh, one second, I have to demand all these, don't I? There we go. That looks more like it. Uh, so we've got iron plate in one direction. We're just going to do electromagnets and gears on the other one. We don't really care too much about those. And then it should start spitting it out the other side. And then you just repeat ad nauseum. Electromagnets and then gears, then iron plate. Boom. And one more. One click, quick blueprint copy of that. And we can chuck this sucker right beside it. Right. Ooh. One second, why is that got... Oh yeah, there's no power poles on the far side. All right, and done. And let's speed up time and get this finished really quick. And done. And that's all of the motors finished. Dear Lord. We have... Yep, that, that's a beautiful sight seeing all the ships go crazy. Oh, we didn't set that, did we? Yep, no, 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 no. That, that was my bad. Ah, uh, damn it. Now I have to go back and make sure all of them have minimum drone load. It's just, you don't want them running around with uh, with only a minimum load. That means the moment one is produced or it empties even a tiny bit, they go mental. Oh, great. I francis this up totally. Uh, this is meant to be the furnace line. That's not supposed to be there. God damn it. And there's already so much in it, there's no way I'm trashing all of that. Fine, you horrible mess. You two are going to have to stay there and I'm going to have to build around you. But we've got plenty of open surface on the planet to keep building. This is all going to be where we're putting together the last of our system. Ooh, how's the Dyson Sphere coming along? That's looking pretty nice. 18 gigawatts. I think we're only on solar sails now. That's all we're launching as solar sails. Where's the planet? Ah, our planet's over here launching solar sails. I should maybe increase the solar sail output. That's pretty slow. Oh, I think 18 gigawatts. No, 18 gigawatts should be plenty for our needs. Just for now, anyway. Oh, yeah. This here is what we have left to do. Now let's just exclude the science ones. We've got, oh, the nanotube, carbon nanotubes are going to be a pain. But most of the rest of these, we've got most of the resources on site. Hydrogen, we're going to have to get from some giants. But like I say, these, these are, a whole bunch of these are going to be just simple knockouts. Oh, plastic. Yeah, we're going to have to get into chemical plants next. Yeah, that's next on the agenda. I know this video was more explainy than action oriented, but I wanted to try and show how I build things, how I design them, and why I design them the way I do, because there was a few people asking. I don't know if this is interesting to the majority of you or not. If it is, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll keep doing it, because it is... Uh, I, I know my reasoning for some things is a little bit silly, like always having the output on the right. This is just a sort of a mental note. I mean, I, I'm of average intelligence, so I'm going to forget where stuff goes a lot, and I'm going to make mistakes a lot. But knowing that the outputs are always on the right means even if I haven't seen a build in weeks, 
or I come back to this in a while later trying to figure out a bottleneck somewhere. I'll always know where the outputs are. I'll always know where the inputs are because every single system will be designed the same. Just having a set of standardization makes it an awful lot simpler when you start to go really big. The bigger you get, the better standardization is. Uh, I suppose that's been the whole theme of this playthrough, hasn't it? Anyway, I am, before I ramble anymore, I'm going to cut this out. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck. Mm -hmm.